Welcome to Maths with Mrs. B. In this lesson, we'll look at the angles of elevation and depression. So my first little diagram here, I have a helicopter in the sky, and this black dotted line represents the skyline. And then at the ground level, I have a person, and this black dotted line here represents the ground. And these two lines are actually parallel to each other, and this is very important when we talk about angles of elevation and depression. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to join the skyline in line with the helicopter and the ground in line with the person so that I can form a diagonal line. And then what we can do is have a look at the angles that are formed between the skyline and the diagonal line. That is called the angle of depression. So the angle of depression always goes from the horizontal line down towards the diagonal line. Then what's interesting is Then we can have a look at the line at the bottom, which is our ground line, and the angle that's formed at the diagonal. This is called the angle of elevation. This angle and the angle of depression are actually equal to each other because we have parallel lines. And so these form alternate angles. Let's have a look at the next scenario. So we have a little tree here, and we have a diagonal connection to a bird in the sky. So now we can look at the angles here as well. So this angle here will be my angle of depression, and this angle here will be my angle of elevation. Now it's important to understand the wording. So the angle at the bottom will be the angle of elevation from the tree to the bird. And then the angle of depression will be from the bird to the tree. Let's have a look at the last example. We have a lighthouse, which could be at the top of a cliff, and we have a boat in the sea, and we can see that this angle here is going to be my angle of depression, and that will be equal to my angle of elevation. And again, this is the angle of depression from the lighthouse to the ship, and this is the angle of elevation from the ship to the lighthouse. Now that we know how to work out angles of elevation and depression, we can have a look at how to do an example. So this question tells us that the angle of depression to a person, which is from this helicopter, is 30 degrees. So that's this angle here, going from the horizontal downwards towards the diagonal that connects the two objects together. So what we can do is we can have a look at the question to see what other information we're given. And they're telling us that the horizontal distance between the person and the helicopter is 400 meters. That's that distance there. And then the question is, what is the height of the helicopter above the ground? That's that value H that's been labeled there. Now what we can do is we can use the fact that we have alternate angles to put the angle of 30 degrees inside our triangle. Once we've done that, we can label our triangles with opposites, hypotenuse, and adjacent so that we can figure out which trig ratio we need to use. So if you still need to do this, you can go and write so, ka, toa, and then you can choose which trig ratio you need by looking at what you've been given in your triangle. So we've been given the adjacent, so it could be cos or it could be tan. And then we need to work out the opposite. So that could be sine or it could be tan. But this is the only one with two ticks, so we're going to be using tan. Now you can go and put the values in as needed. So we have tan, and then we have our angle is 30 degrees. And then we have opposite, which is the side H that we're looking for, and the adjacent is 400 meters. Now we can work that out, so we can make H the subject of the formula by taking tan and multiplying it on both sides, so that we get H alone. And then we can put this in the calculator, and you should get an answer of 230,94 meters. Let's have a look at this example. So it says that the angle of elevation from a tree to a bird. So that's going to be this angle of 45 degrees here because it goes from the tree and up to the bird. And the distance from the tree to the bird is 250 meters. So they've given us the diagonal distance that connects the two, and that is going to be our hypotenuse. And then it asks for the height of the bird above the ground. So that's going to be this H value here. So let's go label our triangle so that we've got our hypotenuse, 
the adjacent and the opposite. Now we need to decide which trig ratio we're going to use. So we can say, well, we need to have the hypotenuse because that's one of the values we're going to use. And we need to use this value h here, which is the opposite, because that's the one we're trying to calculate. And so we're going to use the one that uses opposite and hypotenuse, and that is going to be sine. So let's go fill in the values. So we have sine of 45 degrees, that's the angle. And then we have opposite, which is the value we're looking for, over the hypotenuse, which is 250. And so we can rearrange this equation so that we have h is equal to 250 times by sine 45. And this will give you an answer of 176,78 meters. And the last example we're going to look at is when you're actually asked to find the angle of elevation. And so here it tells us that a boat is 1200 meters away from the bottom of a cliff. So that's the 1200 meters in the diagram there. And then we have the cliff is 500 meters tall. So that's that side there. And then they ask us to work out the angle of elevation of the boat to the lighthouse. And so what we need to do is label our triangles as always. And so we can do that with opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. Then we need to decide which trig ratio we're going to use. Well, we need to use this 500 meters, which is opposite, and we need to use this 1200 meters, which is adjacent. We can't use anything with the hypotenuse because we don't have a value for that. So we're going to just use tan of the angle, which we don't know because tan is the only one that doesn't use the hypotenuse. Then the opposite side is 500 meters and the adjacent side is 1200 meters. And that will give us an answer of theta equals arctan. And you can press the shift button on your calculator to get arctan. And you can fill it in exactly as you see it here. And your answer will be 22,62 degrees for the angle. And that's your final answer. And one note about these types of questions is that often you will be given the diagram. But if you're not given the diagram, you need to make sure that you interpret the values that you're given and the angles that you're given in the correct place by using your parallel lines and your alternate angles when necessary. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful and if you'd like to see more videos.